OK, so to make sense of exactly how I managed to achieve what I did using just BBC Basic, I'm going to walk through each of the steps and show you the effects as I go along. So hopefully it begins to make a bit of sense and you can get an understanding for how this sort of thing can be done and how you might be able to do it for other games that suffer from similar problems. So the first thing that I did, uh, given that it was the root cause, was I went to proc B and I just took out all of these print tab statements because uh, these are the ones responsible obviously for printing the spaces. So I'm just going to remove those um, just to get rid of them because I don't want them in the program or at least I certainly don't want them here. Now I didn't completely eliminate proc B altogether, which was something I did consider at the start. Uh, the reason being that as well as the print tab statements that print the spaces, it also has calls to a couple of other procedures inside it. You'll actually see those calls also being used inside proc V as well. Um, now the purposes of this video, I don't need to go into exactly what these procedures do, but suffice it to say that they are responsible for controlling the movement of Santa's missile if he's fired one, and the movement of Santa himself. The reason why these procedures have to be called so regularly is because essentially in the game you want Santa to be able to move slightly faster than the Snow Vaders, and you also want his missile to continue to move up the screen um, independently, or at least to give the illusion of it moving independently from the rest of what's going on in the game. Now, because all of these operations happen within inside one single loop iteration, it's important for operations that you want to happen at a more regular interval to be called multiple times within that iteration. If we only called them once, then Santa would only ever be able to move one step left or right and then have to essentially wait until the snow vaders have moved, his missile has moved up the screen, etc., before he could then move again. And that doesn't actually simulate the kind of effect that you want in a game. So there are regular calls uh, within the game loop and within the procedures within the game loop to both proc MB and proc uh, move BS. As a result, I thought, well, I don't want to wholesale rewrite this program, so I'm going to leave these in place. I'll leave proc B where it is and where it gets called um, further up uh, in the code. I'll leave that in place. At the moment, I just want to eliminate the printing of the spaces here because ultimately what I want to do is merge that into proc V, which is this procedure you can see up here. So having removed uh, the print tab statements from proc B, what happens? Okay, so we load up Snow Vaders, and this is what happens. So we're not printing spaces to overlay the previous Snow Vader, and so you just get this weird kind of psychedelic look, um, and then that happens. Now, the reason for that happening I will explain uh, by going back to the code. So I mentioned in part one that when the snowmen, or at least the furthest edge of the line of snowmen, reaches the right-hand side of the screen, uh, the code runs a few uh, steps here to cause the snowmen to essentially shift down by one and then start moving backwards from right to left. And the way that it's actually doing that is it's using this function here, FNR, which if I go to it, um, without, again, getting too uh, involved, um, there's a machine code um, bit of uh, inline assembler here, which is essentially looking at what character is on the screen at a given point on that screen. So as I say, I'm not going to unpack that too much, but it's looking at the screen memory and saying, OK, what character is in that area of the screen at this time? And if there is something other than a space in that location and it persists there for more than one iteration of the loop, then it assumes, OK, the snowmen have reached the far side of the screen. It is now time to shift them down by one, which you do by increasing this M percentage, which is the Y coordinate of the snow vaders uh, print tab statements. You increase it by one, which causes it to go down by one. Now, because I have removed the, uh, the print tab statements from proc B that cause spaces to be placed over the snow vaders after they have moved um, in, in one direction, what happens, and you probably even saw it in the, uh, the little video clip there, is that the old Snow Vader just gets printed and left on the screen. So when the Snow Vaders reach the far right hand side, what happens is the, the, the prior snow, Snowman just sits there. And so when this function runs uh, in, uh, two times in a row, it detects the fact that there's not a space 
on the screen. So it goes, oh, okay, time to increase M percentage by one. And then it loops around and does it again and does it again and does it again. And so you get that cascading effect, which then suddenly causes all of the snowmen to just pile down the screen. And uh, as you saw, Santa then also died. So actually printing spaces over the top of the snowvaders is important, not just to give that appearance of animation. It's also being done in order to well, essentially control whether the snowvaders should move down the screen. So it's actually it's actually serving two purposes because of the way that the game has been coded. OK, so we're clear that it's important to overlay spaces over the top of the snowvaders, not just for the animation, but also to ensure that the game continues to work in the way that it's been designed. And as I said, I'm not looking to wholesale rewrite the game here. I'm just trying to patch it sufficiently to try and get rid of that uh, slightly frustrating flicker. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, at line 650, we have got these two uh, resident integer variables being set to a value of zero and a value of three, respectively. And these are our X and Y coordinate variables for the print tab statements, not just the print tab statements for the snowvaders, but also the print tabs for the, the, the blanks that were being printed by proc B. It's actually using them both. So on the first iteration of the loop, uh, it uses these to print the snowvaders, and then as it gets to proc B, it uses them again to print the spaces over the previously printed um, snowvaders. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a couple of extra resident integer variables, uh, F percentage and G percentage, which I checked were not in use uh, elsewhere in the code. Um, and as you'll know from previous videos of mine, resident integer variables are essentially variables that are available to you to use. They're already there on, I think it's the zero page of memory within uh, the, within the BBC Micro. So they're a little bit faster to use uh, because they don't take as long to look up. And um, it means I don't have to declare brand new variables. It does make them slightly cryptic because the F and G don't really tell you anything about what they mean, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to initialize them to minus 99 in both cases. Uh, that will become clear a bit later on. But uh, what I'm actually doing here now is I'm introducing an additional X and Y coordinate that I want to control separately for the printing of the spaces. So rather than piggybacking on the same X and Y coordinates that are being used to print the snowvaders, I'm going to use my, my own uh, separate uh, integer variables to control the printing of the spaces. So that's that's the first change that I need to do here. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that although proc V is called uh, throughout the game loop, you can actually see that it gets called once before the game loop actually starts. So it's actually important that my F and my G resident integer variables, which control the X and Y coordinates for my space printing, are kept separate from L and M. So L and M, as you can see at the very start, are set to 0 and 3. I've set F and G to minus 99 in, in both cases then proc v will get called for the first time. So the very first time proc v is called, these values are completely separate. However, after that first call, I want to now make f and g the same values as l and m were when proc v was first called. So what I do is you can see down here, we've got into the game loop. So we, we called proc v for the first time outside the game loop. It'll get called again in every iteration down here. But before we get to that step, what I want to do is say, OK, make uh, my F integer variable the same as what L was at the time that proc V first ran and make G the same as what M was the first time that proc V ran. So effectively, what I'm doing is I'm caching the values of L and M from their first use and storing them in F and G. This then means that when proc V runs uh, for the next time, it will use um, these values for F and G for printing the spaces, but it'll use the values of L and M, including any manipulations, which you can see down here, there might have been some manipulations to those values. Um, it'll use those for printing the snowmen. So we've now got two discrete uh, sets of variables that are being used independently for printing our spaces versus printing our snowmen. So what happens if I now run this code? Well, as you won't be surprised to learn, nothing nothing happens any differently from the last time I ran it, because although I've set up a couple of new variables and I've set them up to use certain values, I'm not actually making use of those variables yet. And so the same problem that we had previously is still going to reoccur. OK, so it's time to get into the guts of 
Proc V, which is where all of the printing takes place for the Snowvaders, and it's also the procedure whose functionality I want to merge with the printing of spaces as well. So I've got my separate F and G uh, resident integer variables, which act as my X and Y coordinates for the spaces. So it should be a simple exercise to simply say, OK, well, in addition to having uh, this print tab statement here, what I'm going to do is first have a separate print tab statement of F comma G percentage, uh, which I will use to print the first um, array of my of my space um, values here. Now, the way that the values for space and the way that the values for the snowmen is being controlled is happening outside of this procedure. And to be honest, I don't need to worry too much about how that's being done. The game code is already managing these things for me. It's doing the, the work of uh, deciding whether or not Santa has shot a given snowman and whether or not there ought to be a space in a particular location within the, the line array. Uh, or whether there should be a snowman. So actually that side of things is all being governed outside the procedure. All I'm having to do here is say, look, rather than just printing a snowvader, um, I want you to print a space in the position where the snowvader was, and then I want you to print a snowvader. So it seems like a fairly straightforward exercise, and we could probably just repeat this all the way down. We can just do the same thing um, for each uh, line. So we can just say, okay, give me the um, the relevant value for uh, from the space array and put it in front of this one and so on and so on. So what I'll do is a little bit of Blue Peter magic and there we have it. So I've now got equivalent print tabs for printing the spaces um, where the Snowvader should have been previously followed by the original print tabs that are printing the Snowvaders. And notice that I am adding the same uh, increment for my G percentage resident integer variable as for the M on this side. So that governs the, uh, the Y coordinate so that I'm printing the spaces on exactly the same Y coordinate as where the Snowvader itself is being printed. So there's a consistency all the way down. I've also removed the lines that were previously in DefProc V that were printing lines of spaces in between each row of Snowvaders, basically because I didn't really understand why they were in there in the first place. They didn't seem to be adding very much because if you don't print something uh, on a given line, uh, then it'll just be spaces anyway. Uh, and obviously when you do print things, they overwrite whatever was there previously. So having these arbitrary printed lines of spaces underneath each line array of snowmen didn't really make any sense to me. So I just took them out. Um, so there you go. That's now our refined DefProc V. We've now got spaces being printed and then the, uh, the new snowman being printed. And it's all happening within one procedure as one single operation. So that should fix it, right? All right, here's Snowvaders. We are running with the latest code changes. Let's see what happens. Oh, it looks pretty decent. Looks like my snow... Oh, well, that looked a bit odd. Hmm, not quite sure what was happening there. Well, anyway, I mean, we seem to have... We seem to have got a, a much better... Um, a much better version of the game going here. Uh, it does seem like I seem to have broken the floor of the game at the bottom, and those Snowvaders do lose their heads on each... Uh, on each descent, but you know, not a bad, not bad. I mean, we could probably live with that, right? That's not too bad. Um, I mean, as things as things are concerned here, it's not. It's it's actually looking pretty decent. Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Yes, well, you probably didn't need to be too eagle-eyed to spot that one. Um, in addition to the fact that the Snowvaders lose their heads on each descent, uh, I've also incurred a new bug, which is that, um, yeah, that <laughs> that's not that's not what we want. So when I destroy one column of Snowvaders on the far left side, uh, unfortunately what we end up with um, is this rather weird effect where the snowmen um, continue printing. There you go. So that's, uh, that's not what we want. We don't want half snowmen showing up uh, each time I destroy uh, a column of Snowvaders. So I've solved one problem, but I've introduced a new one. So actually, as it turned out, took me a while to figure it out. But to solve the first problem, which is the issue of the Snowvaders uh, causing a uh, essentially a repeated half snowman every time you destroy one column of Snowvaders on the left, uh, that can be very easily fixed. So at the start of DefProc V, uh, there is a little bit of logic here where essentially what the code is doing is it's saying if the L percentage, which remember L percentage is the X coordinate of the Snowvader print tab statements. So if that value is minus one, then add one to it. 
And what that is really saying is if the furthest edge of Snow Vader uh, has reached the minus one position on the screen, so effectively it's gone beyond the zero coordinate, which essentially would translate to it having reached the edge of where it thinks the end of the screen is, but it's still moving. And that means that you've destroyed um, Snow Vader's on the left-hand side all the way down the column. So what is now the edge of the uh, line array of Snow Vader's is no longer the edge of the screen. Because if you think about it, when all of the Snow Vader's are present on the screen, when they get all the way across to the left-hand side of the screen, that means that your closest Snow Vader is at position zero, as far as x-coordinates are concerned. Now, by contrast, if you've destroyed an entire column, or indeed several columns of Snow Vader's, Actually, the X coordinate of the closest Snow Vader to the edge of the screen is no longer zero. It's actually gone beyond zero and through into negative territory. So what this code is essentially saying is, well, if that's happened, if the if the X coordinate of the furthest Snow Vader to the edge of the left hand side of the screen has gone into a negative value, well, restore it to a value of zero. And that actually is all that's needed to ensure that the Snow Vaders can keep traversing from right to left. But because we haven't done anything with our f uh, percentage integer variable, the one that's governing the printing of the spaces at this stage, it carries on thinking that the edge of the screen has been reached. And so it just keeps on essentially not overlaying spaces on the remaining uh, time that it takes to get the Snow Vaders from the, uh, the right-hand side to the left. It sounds complicated, but actually the, 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 the way that you fix that is you just add a nice little bit here to say, well, if it is the case that we've gone into negative territory for our Snow Vaders, then just set this to a value of 1. And what that does is it means that you will now continue to print spaces in the positions of the previous snowmen up until the point that they really do hit the left edge of the screen. That is all it takes to fix that bug. And by the way, that was the bug that took me the longest to fix. Uh, but it turns out that that's all I needed to do. Um, so actually, we can now run this and demonstrate that it does fix the problem. OK, so we're back into Snow Vaders. And we head into the game. Now, we've still got that problem with the floor, which I need to fix at the bottom of the screen. And obviously, the Snow Vaders are still losing their heads each time they move one down the screen. But let's see what happens now if I completely uh, eradicate uh, a whole column of Snow Vaders on the far left side. Uh, we just need to make sure that I ooh, managed to catch a reindeer there. Uh, let's uh, get this last couple. I need to make sure that I do it when they're when they're moving from right to left. Otherwise, it doesn't it doesn't simulate the problem. But anyway, there we go. We've removed it, and now look, see, we don't get those weird half snow vaders printing on the screen. And just double check that. We will do it. We'll do it again. We'll obliterate that that column. So now the edge of our snow vader array is going into negative territory, but we're still printing spaces to cover our tracks. And so we have solved one problem. We've got two more left to fix, but this is pretty good progress. OK, so we've got two more bugs to fix before we can truly say that we have solved the problem. Uh, this is often the way with um, programming in general. You start off with one problem, and in fixing that problem, you generate two more. Or in my case, three more. But we have at least solved one of those three. But we've got two left. And one's quite simple and one's quite challenging. So I'm going to start with the simple one, which is that at the moment when you start up Snow Vaders, um, Santa is supposed to be standing on a nice snowy ground, uh, which runs all the way along the bottom of the screen. But you will have noticed in the more recent clips uh, where we've been looking at the changes to the code that actually that snowscape has been broken and a lot of it is now replaced with black spaces. So why is that happening? Well, it's all to do with the fact that if we remember uh, when we were looking at the start or just before the game loop, uh, proc v actually gets called once before the game loop starts. So if we scroll back up to the uh, the top where that's happening here, so we've got our um, we've got our game loop starting here, but before that we had actually got one call to proc v, which happens here. Now remember that at this stage, although L percentage and M percentage have been set for the first printing of the snowmen, 
F percentage and G percentage, I set them to these arbitrary negative 99 values um, just because I needed them to be distinct from L and M at this stage because there's no point setting them to the same values of L and M for the first run because otherwise I'd just end up printing spaces directly over the snowmen uh, as soon as the snowmen have been printed. So I'd actually end up with nothing moving across the screen which would <laughs> rather defeat the object. So I set them to these arbitrary negative values. Now that sounds good, but unfortunately the problem is what's actually happening is that the very first time that procv gets called, it's still nevertheless running the print tab statements to print the spaces. But at this point, f and g are set to values of negative 99. Now, basic doesn't have a very good way of managing that because actually print tab statements um, can only have positive x and y values. If you give it negative ones, it does its best, but it doesn't really know what to do with them. And so what you end up with is a slightly erratic behavior where it's printing some spaces somewhere around the bottom region of the screen. And that's actually what's destroying my snow landscape. So it's peppering it with spaces when uh, when I don't really want it to do that. So how do I get around that? Well, this, the easiest way to do that is to simply wrap each one of these uh, combined print tabs with some if then logic. So what I can say is, look, if f percentage does not e uh, sorry does not equal negative 99 so it's not the default setting at the start if it's not that then do what i've been doing which is print space in the location where a snowman would have been printed before and then print the snowman however if it is negative 99 then all i want it to do is print the snowman i don't want it to print a space because if the value is negative 99 then it's going to print a space at some random location on the screen which destroys my snow landscape at the bottom so that's all you need to do you just wrap all of these print tab statements in this if logic and i can just literally go all the way down and say look we can do this for all of these so if they, if they're it's um negative 99 you can just literally oops pop this down here this is the benefit of using uh bbc basic for windows editor because i can do copy pastes um, and then I'll just put set up my, my else statements here and pop those against each one of these. Um, if you're unfamiliar with BBC Basic, uh, it's it, when you use if then statements or if then else, um, there is actually no then. You just say if something and then if you put a space and then put whatever you want. And it can be multiple commands, but they have to be separated by colon here. Um, and it's the same with else. So as long as there's a space between else, uh, sorry, um, so long as you've got an else condition, then whatever follows after it will, will be used. So uh, yeah, that's that's really all I need to do here um, is just quickly pop these in position. And there we go. We've now got our if uh, if then uh, logic wrapped around these print tabs. So it'll only print the spaces uh, on the proviso that the F percentage value isn't negative 99. So we're all good here. This should solve our problem uh, when it comes to the, uh, the problem of the disappearing floor. So what I can do here is I'll just paste this into my Beeb, BeebM emulator. Uh, this, by the way, is how you can get code in and out of uh, the emulator. You literally just a case of copy paste. So uh, BeebM supports copy paste, which is quite helpful. So I can just copy and paste out of uh, BBC Basic for Windows and I can run my code. And what we should now find is that uh, although we won't have fixed the, uh, the the snowmen losing their heads, you can see that my ground at the bottom of the screen is nice and completely printed without those weird spaces in between. So that's solved our bug. Hurrah! All right, but we still need to solve our final bug, which is the fact that as the snowmen reach the right hand side of the screen and move down, they lose their heads. Now, it is the kind of bug where if you were being lazy, uh, and believe me, it got to the point where I was starting to feel quite lazy about this one, you could you could live with it because they only lose their heads for a, a second. And then as soon as they start moving from right to left again, they, they recover their heads. But it's, it's a little bit ugly and ideally we want to eradicate it. So as with uh, where we were solving the problem of those half snowmen being printed after we eradicated a whole column of snowvaders on the left, it was just a case of tweaking, um, in that case, the F percentage value for the X coordinate, uh, we need to do something with our Y coordinate. So you can see here that at line 720, we have some uh, logic here that is governing the behavior of the snowvaders when they reach the right hand side of the screen. 
In fact, that logic starts up here um, and is continued down here. So essentially what it does is it uses this function here, which is similar to FNL, uh, FNR is, is, is equivalent. FNR is what is in the right-hand uh, location at the furthest edge of the screen. Uh, in fact, we saw that um, earlier on. And there's also an equivalent FNL uh, function, which you can see here, which is also looking at what's on the furthest left side of the screen. Anyway, this function, um, depending on what it returns, uh, the code here will determine, OK, the Snowvaders have reached the furthest edge of the right hand side of the screen. So we're going to reverse the direction of the Snowvaders. That's what the ender um, uh, variable is doing here. And we're also going to set our down um, variable to say that, yes, they are now moving down. So you can see here, if they are moving down by one, then it sets a bunch of values. Uh, and if the value of R percentage, which is what uh, this function recovers uh, or returns, I should say, um, if it returns a negative value, that means, oh, the Snowvaders have gone beyond, supposedly gone beyond the edge of the screen. So that means it's time for them to move down. And you can see that the way that it does that is it simply adds one to our Y coordinate for the Snowvaders. So I think, all right, well, in that case, all I need to do is essentially apply the same uh, the same idea but what i'm going to say is well because they are at this point moving down by one i want my spaces to move down by one so in that event i want g percentage to be the same as m percentage right because here we're adding one to it to, to essentially shift the next printed snowman down by one which means that i want the previous printed space to be shifted down by one because otherwise it's not going to cover up uh, the snowman directly above the snowman who is moving down the screen. And that should solve our headless snowman problem. So again, hopefully a fairly simple tweak and we will be in business. All right, back into Snowvaders, loading up the game. And I'm not going to bother shooting any of them. I just want to see what happens now when they reach the right hand side. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Oh, well, well <laughs> we have gone into recursion territory here. Wow. Yeah, okay, well, it turns out that that, um, that tweak didn't quite work in the way that I wanted it to. Uh, we're back into uh, some familiar territory here because what's happening is that... Well, let's even reset the game. Fantastic. So what, what's actually happening here? We'll just see it in action again. So on the one hand, I actually have fixed the headless snowman problem because if you look carefully, you can see that as they move down, they aren't losing their heads anymore. The problem is that they are also leaving a copy of their heads behind. And as you will recall, because of that FNR function, which is looking at the far right hand side of the screen and trying to determine whether or not there's something there, well, it's finding that there is something there. And so, of course, it's causing our dear old snowman to keep on moving down the screen. And then, of course, eventually they reach the bottom of the screen and everything goes crazy. So we've sort of solved the problem, but hey, presto, we've introduced another bug. Okay, so to fix our final bug, the bug of the dismembered snowman heads, which is, let's face it, not very festive, uh, we just need to ensure that when the snow vaders reach the right-hand side of the screen and they are in a position to move down, that we overlay some spaces across where those dismembered snowman heads are being printed. Because not only does that obviously eliminate the problem of having those heads being printed on the screen when we don't want them, it also stops the function R from detecting something in that position in screen memory and causing the Snowvaders to constantly move down the screen, as we saw just now. So it's actually not too difficult. All we need to do is pop an extra line in here. And what this line is doing, if we just read it through, is it's saying, OK, if G percentage and M percentage are the same value, which can only ever happen, you will recall, when the Snowvaders move down the screen by one. So that's the only time when these two values are the same. Otherwise, G percentage is negative 99 when it when the very first time that PROC V runs, and at all other times, uh, G percentage is what the value of M percentage was on the previous loop iteration. So there is only ever one time where they're the same, and it's the point at which the Snowvaders are moving down the screen by one. And in that eventuality, what I want to do is print a nice line of 20 spaces, which is the width of the screen in mode five. I want to print a nice line of spaces at each of the positions where those Snowvader heads would otherwise get left behind. And so that is uh, essentially at G percentage negative one, uh, which is one above um, where the Snowvader is now being printed. 
and then at plus two, which is uh, one above the, the the first line, plus five, which is one above the second line, and plus eight, which is one above the third line. And that gives us spaces overlaying the heads. And hopefully, as we shall now see, it solves our problem. And hopefully now we have ironed out all of our bugs and we can see we've got ground at the bottom. We can see our snowvaders are moving nicely across the screen. And when they reach the far right hand side of that screen, if we watch carefully, boom, down they go and they retain their heads. And I can also safely take out an entire column of snowvaders on the left hand side. And in theory, uh, once I do that, oh, just bag a reindeer there as well. But when I do that, I don't get a, a trailing set of half snowmen uh, moving from right to left. So there we have it. That is Snow Vaders in a position where I can now do what I originally wanted to do, which was to review it <laughs> and actually tell you what the game is like. Um, so I suppose first impressions of the game is it's a very festive game. Um, you've obviously got that lovely little uh, Jingle Bells uh, music going on in the background. I actually think that the, the graphics for it, for some simple um, BBC Basic uh, character redefinition graphics, are actually rather sweet. Um, the reindeers are actually pretty impressive. Uh, the snowmen are sufficiently menacing, because after all they're the bad guys here. Uh, not just snowmen, as we shall see. Um, Santa, Santa's a little bit squashed looking, I think it's fair to say. Um, it, it is discernibly a guy with a beard and a hat. Um, I, I must admit, the first time I loaded it up, partly because I was distracted by the flashing snowmen, um, that sounded a bit odd, uh, the flickering snowmen, let's say, uh, I thought that it was actually a, a sort of an elf face, because his arms sort of look like ears. But anyway, it is, it is Santa. We've now moved into the second level, and you can see that our snowvaders are not just snowmen. We've now been joined by angry Christmas trees, uh, which is rather fun. Um, so what else to say about the game? Uh, I personally am a big fan of the the red flashing screen that you get when you when you shoot one of them. That's actually something that Martin Hollis uh, provided as an optional um, switch on switch off feature. So uh, in the instructions at the start, you can actually turn that off if you don't like it. Um, but I personally think it's quite good. Uh, it gives a real sense of satisfaction each time you take out one of the snowvaders. Um, I think uh, definite uh, definite props for the uh, for the igloos as well. Those are rather lovely. Um, I think you know a nice bit of attention to detail there in terms of making this a truly Christmassy game. Uh, they didn't just sort of decide, well, you know, it's a, it's basically Space Invaders with different graphics, so we'll just have bases at the bottom. No, no, no. They thought it through. Martin decided, no, we're going to make those igloos, which I think just adds it a little bit of extra um, joy to the game. Really, uh, really does make it feel festive. Um, now we're hopefully going to see what we get after this level. Here we go, we've got grumpy teddy bears now joining the ranks and you have to shoot the snowvaders with more than one bullet. So uh, when you first shoot them, uh, you'll hear a boom. <laughs> um, that means you've shot it once, um, but you need to shoot it again uh, to take it out. So uh, yeah, the difficulty level starting to ratchet up, which again, I mean, for a type in listing uh, written in BBC Basic, well, mostly BBC Basic, there is a little bit of inline assembly uh, for controlling the, uh, the well, Santa's controls moving left and right. Um, but yes, nevertheless, for a predominantly BBC Basic game, uh, I actually think that uh, there's been a, a decent amount of um, thought that's gone into it to make it uh, yeah, more than just a very basic Space Invader style game with no real difference between the levels. Um, so yeah, they've actually thought about putting in some difficulty here to make it more of a challenge. Um, it plays pretty well. Um, I mean, you can see, you, you probably noticed it just then, it does it does sort of wobble a bit from time to time because uh, I think that the uh, the game is, as I say, predominantly a basic game, so it, it doesn't have the speed advantage of a pure assembly game. But uh, nevertheless, I think perfectly playable, uh, nice bit of festive fun. Um, one of the things we haven't yet seen, I'm actually slightly amazed that we haven't seen it yet, is me dying because the, uh, the effect of Santa dying is quite something. Um, when you get struck by a snowball, which I've managed to avoid so far, um, yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's quite an entertaining, it's quite an entertaining feature. So I might just sit here for a little bit and see if I can get struck by a snowball. There we go. 
Bo 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 bo. It's a sort of slightly soulful rendition of uh, Jingle Bells as he dies. So apparently, according to the instructions, um, he, he's beginning slowly frozen. Now that's also uh, highlighted another aspect of the game, which is perhaps not so fun, which is that uh, when you lose a life, the level resets. So it doesn't take you right back to the beginning. Obviously, we're still on level three here. But the fact that uh, losing a life means that you have to basically start the level all over again and you lose your progress within the level, that is more than a little disappointing. Um, I, it's partly down to the way that the game is coded. Because it uses these line arrays um, rather than a full grid array like Cosmic Invaders, uh, it doesn't have the ability to store how many of the Snowvaders you've killed. Um, now I dare say with with some further hacking of the game you might be able to get it to uh, to do that but I, I feel that at that point you would be taking it quite far away from the way that it was originally written and as I said at the start my, my intention here was not to completely rewrite the game I mean if I was going to do that I would have probably written it as a grid array like Cosmic Invaders um, but I, I think that that's probably doing the original game a bit of a disservice I don't I'm not looking to rewrite a new game um, what I what I wanted to do was try and take the original and just make a few adjustments to it to still keep it true to the original, but just just remove the the migraine inducing flashing snowmen, sorry flickering snowmen, um, which I've managed to do, and uh, I hope that you will agree that it was worth the effort to do it because what we've ended up with is a game that I'm actually managing to make some progress with and not get completely. Uh, frustrated by um, and we're already on to level three here which is pretty good going by by my gaming standards um, I think it's fair to say that this is definitely a game probably more with the younger player in mind because it is obviously quite quite slow and as a result of that you know it's probably more geared towards um, a child than necessarily an adult player Ooh, what have we got here these are like angry robots by the looks of it it looks a little bit like the uh, House of Commons Portcullis logo, actually. But anyway, there you go. So the game keeps it fresh and original. So as you move through the levels, you get these um, these new graphics as well, which I think is nice. Nevertheless, the menacing snowmen are still there throughout. Uh, they never they never seem to give up. But um, the onslaught continues, and uh, yeah, we've got robots to contend with now. So uh, yeah. Um, the fact that it's in mode five it makes it a slightly chunkier game um, because you obviously the the width of the uh, pixels in mode five is slightly broader than it is uh, in some of the other modes. But yeah, I as I say, I, I think for a little festive game, uh, it's no Jet Set Santa. That 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 really was quite a special one in the uh, the Mary Beebe series. But but this this game is not bad at all. And um, as I say, with the slight coding enhancements to it to just make it possible to sit and play for more than a couple of minutes um yeah i think it's uh it was worth the effort worth the effort to make uh, to be able to make a proper review of it um now i don't know what your thoughts are on the music uh, the music has been going for obviously quite a while now and it is a very repetitive jingle bells uh tune that we have going on but you know i've i've said before in other reviews of bbc micro games um having some background music is always a nice plus and and the game does give you the ability to turn it off if you really don't want it so you, there is the option to disable it if it gets too too irritating and we've got stockings now um but uh yeah i mean for a type in listing in particular actually i think it's quite impressive that it's got music at all um i mean a lot of type in listings you would not have got music thrown into the mix uh, and also, we should we should add this was a 1984 type in, so this is one of the earlier ones. Uh, it came out in the Christmas edition of the Micro User um, only a year after the magazine was launched. Uh, so, I yeah, I don't think that uh, we can we can snub the um, snub this game too much because actually it it is one of the early ones. Um, obviously, there were many uh, greater things to come as as people learnt more about what you could do. Uh, both with basic and indeed inline assembler, but uh, yeah, I compare and contrast with say Death Watch, which was the very first type in listing, which I uh, covered in another video. Um, this is not bad at all, and certainly graphically speaking, um, I think Martin's done a great job because uh, the graphics are very 
They're very fun. Um, as I say, those reindeer in particular at the top of the screen, I think, are brilliant. Um, very, very nicely done. Um, so yes, this is Snow Vaders. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to continue to play, but since I haven't managed to expend all of my Santa lives, I'm going to keep going until uh, until I do, um, just to see how much further we can get. I'd like to see what we get after the stockings, because in my test runs I don't think I've gone beyond this level, so it would be nice to just see whether or not we get uh, yet more um, graphics, or whether it just starts to recycle the one. Oh dear. Oh no, that means I've got to do it from the beginning again. Ugh. <laughs> That is, uh, that is slightly annoying. So, although the death is quite creative, um, it, it does take it does take quite a long time to get through. So, um, I think I think that's probably possibly one aspect of the game that if I, I like the idea of the sort of fr freezing to death Santa, slightly uh, slightly macabre as it is, but um, it, yeah, it does take a little bit of time to to get it th get through. Um, as it has to randomly speckle Santa with white dots uh, in order to clear him. But uh, there we are. So let's see if we can get past the stocking level. As I say, that's the, uh, the challenge of Snow Vader is you need to you need to clear the level in one life, otherwise it's uh, back to the beginning again, which is obviously not not great. Now you can see that the collision detection, by the way, is a little bit patchy. I mean, that's not related to the changes to the game that I've made. I mean, it, that's just the nature of a of, of a basic arcade game. Uh, it's it's not got the uh, the speed and the uh, sort of finesse that you would get with a, an assembly code written game. And so, the collision detection is very much based on um, a, an approximation. As you can see, sometimes you actually manage to hit them when your bullet has only really grazed the edges, but that's because it's using um, the location of uh, the VDU characters um, and sometimes you strike at, at what looks like space, but it's actually still part of the character. Um, similar issue with Cosmic Invaders. Cosmic Invaders obviously uses uh, Mode 7, so it's reliant on Mode 7 Sixels, but it's a similar idea that you, you, know, you, can, you can take out a Cosmic Invader when you haven't technically hit it. Um, but there you go. I mean, as I say, you, you, I don't want to be overly harsh about this. It's uh, it is what it is. It's a basic game. It's a type in listing, not an overly long type in listing either. You'll have noticed from the code snippets that you've seen on the screen um, when I've been going through the code. I think it runs to about line three thousand and something. So I mean, you're not talking about more than about three hundred lines of actual code to have had to type in uh, back in the day. Um, so yeah, not not bad at all. Okay, we've only got a couple of stockings left. I don't want to get snowballed here, because otherwise it's back to the start again. Ooh, taking some risks. Come on, just take out that one. There we go, only one left. Try not to get snowballed. Oh. Oh. Wow, that took three hits. Ooh, interesting. I'm not quite sure who they're supposed to be. I think, possibly from the instructions, I think they might be Angry Santas. Maybe they're like Santa's nemesis. I don't know, but you know, nevertheless, the uh, the graphics they keep on coming, um, so I I can't fault the game there. Uh, they're all based at the top of the code. For those of you interested in going through the listing in more detail, um, there's a whole bunch of VDU commands at the start that redefine the characters uh, to be able to print these graphics. Uh, as I mentioned in part one, all of the Snow Vaders are made up of four characters, so a two by two. Uh, set of characters, uh, redefined characters, which is how you get these nice big, um, big printed characters. Um, which, I, yeah, again, I think is uh, is nice. You know, you could you could have written a game like this with just individual VDU characters, but it wouldn't have given it quite the same, quite the same feel or quite the same look. And uh, you know, I think I think having some chunky characters is not a bad thing. So there we go. Um, now you don't get the uh, the typical Space Invader um, rapid speed up um, as you as you take out more and more of the Snow Vaders. So classic Space Invaders, the more of them that you shoot, obviously the faster 
they move across the screen. Um, and that's actually a byproduct, by the way. In, in the original Space Invaders, that's a byproduct of how it's coded. Um, it just means that because it's having to draw less and less on the screen, um, the uh, the processor is able to just get through uh, each iteration faster and faster. Uh, so the more that you take out, the faster it gets, which is a, is a very nice, uh, as I say, a nice byproduct of, of the code. So it, it enhances the difficulty of the game um, but more to do with just the the um, uh, limitations within which uh, it was written. So uh, I'm going to go with one of those gaming uh, serendipitous moments, I think, for uh, the original developers. But there you go. Uh, but yes, we don't have that here with Snowvaders. They are they plod along. Let's be fair. They are a very much a, a sort of gentle movement across the screen uh, as we move through the game loop. Um, so, let's see if we can get past this level. I'm curious to know if we've got any more new graphics to see. Um, I don't know if we do, but... Uh, let's... Ooh, don't want to get snowballed. I've only got one life left, and I don't really want to have to repeat this level again. Ooh, that snowball's lying around for a bit. There. Ooh! Oh, you also can't shoot the snowball. Well, you can shoot the snowballs, but it doesn't take them out. Uh, okay. Ooh. Don't kill me, don't kill me, don't kill me. I've only got one more to go. Come on. Yeah! Oh! Okay, I see. So it looks like uh, if you get round to um, level 7, it just starts to recycle the graphics. But in this case, we're, we're like solid, solid Christmas trees now. So we haven't got, uh, we haven't got any more snowmen joining the ranks. Um, but there you go. Uh, not not bad at all. Now I, I don't know how much longer I will continue to play for because it's actually proving to be quite an easy game, um, and that means even for me, I'm able to make quite a bit of progress here. Got a pretty hefty score going on at the bottom there, which is pretty nice. Um, I might have to commit a bit of Santa suicide in a minute because um, I don't know if I want to necessarily keep on playing. I have a feeling that now that we've got to level 7, it's only taking one shot to take these guys out. So I think um, I think the only remaining difficulty is the starting position of the Snowvaders. So I think that they start slightly lower down the screen. Um, there you go. Look, we've got solid teddy bears. Um, but yes, it's uh, interesting that uh, the, the difficulty kind of almost resets in a way. Okay, I think it's Santa Suicide time um, because... I don't know if I necessarily want to continue playing any more because I think I've probably given it as solid a review as you could expect for a type in listing game. Um, there you go. Oh, I've still, I've still got one more life. Okay, well, I think I have to do it one more time in that case because I, I think, I think we're, I think we've probably seen as much as we need to see here. Um, so let's, uh, let's see if we can at least get my name into the high score table, which, by the way. Another splendid feature of Snow Vaders for a type in listing, it even has a high score table. Um, so we'll just uh, say goodbye to Santa for the last time and um, get ourselves into the. Oh, no, we've got... still, he's still freezing. S -S Santa's still freezing. It's taking a bit longer to freeze him out this time. It's using a random function to print those white speckles, and it, it basically keeps on going until until he manages to get frozen altogether. But there you go. That is pretty decent for a type in listing. You've even got a high score table, um, which I think is yeah all to its credit. So there you go. Um, that was a much much longer uh, video um, about Snowvaders than I ever intended to make when I first picked it up on the BBC Micro uh, Complete Games Archive website. Um, but I hope that you've enjoyed that. I hope that it's given you a little bit of an insight into how you can hack BBC Micro uh, basic written games um, to fix um, various little bugs. And uh, yeah, maybe you'll go and seek out Snowvaders yourself. If you want to play my flicker-free version, uh, it's available on my GitHub repository. I'll put a link to that at the bottom of the video. You can go and download it from there. Uh, if you're using an emulator, you can literally just paste it into BBEM and run it. Um, alternatively, if you want you, uh, if you want to use it on a on a physical beep, you'd have to put it onto a disk image and load it up that way. But uh, that shouldn't be beyond uh, the uh, skills of my audience because I know you're all very smart people. 
Okay, well, that's it. I'm going to call it to a close here. That was Snowvaders Part 2, Saving Snowvaders, and indeed a review of Snowvaders, having saved it. Hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, I'm going to wish you a Merry Beebmas. Goodbye. <laughs>